Hello, my name is Raul Tibis. I'm a physician here at the Mayo Clinic in Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, today I would like to talk about some of the uh, practical issues that MDS patients or patients with mild dysplastic syndrome are often faced with and some of the most commonly asked questions. So once a diagnosis of an MDS, mild dysplastic syndrome, is established, um, there are several treatment options. For today we'll focus on uh, the so-called hypermethylating agents, there are other terms for that, or also 5-acetidine or decidabine. The brand names are Videzer and Dacogen. The thinking is that they will take certain chemical groups away from the DNA of cells, so-called methyl groups. That's why they're called hypomethylating agents. With that, taking away those, those chemical groups on the DNA, genes that suppress the growth of normal cells are activated, and genes that are abnormally active in MDS cells get suppressed, they get inhibited or shut down, so to speak. That is the common thinking. But there are many things we still don't know about um, Videzer and Decidabine and their precise mechanism of how they work. When a patient comes to see us in clinic, and let's say we have established the diagnosis of an MDS, or an MDS that requires treatment, so I discuss with the patient what are the treatment options. <clears throat> One treatment option we always consider is an allogeneic stem cell transplantation or bone marrow transplantation. That is a way of potentially or possibly curing the MDS. However, before it comes to a transplantation, often we give you know, those medications, those hypermethylating agents first, either to bring down you know, the burden of the MDS or for some patients who are older and may not qualify for a transplant, those patients, you know, the best treatment for those patients is one of those two drugs I mentioned. And maybe what I should add here is um, both Videzer and Decidabine can be given by itself, but there's also attempts to improve their effectiveness and their response rates. So there are several new combinations and new other medications combined with Videzer and Decidabine. Um, often on a clinical trial, you know, in an attempt to improve the, the, the responses and patients actually doing better. So, so the question is, how do we determine which patient, you know, may qualify for, for one of those treatments with, with Videzer or Decidabine? Um, essentially, for more advanced stages of MDS, um, those patients would be appropriate, you know, candidates for treatment. Um, commonly, we determine the stage of the MDS by several you know, criteria. Foremost, the blood tests. So, do, are patients anemic? Do they have low platelets? Is the white count low? And so forth. As well as in the bomber, the bomber biopsy is very important because we can measure the percentage of blast cells or leukemic cells. So, the more of those leukemic or blast cells are there, and the more severe the cytopenias, so the low blood counts are, the more advanced generally the MDS is. In addition, we also do some genetic studies, mostly what we call um, the chromosome studies, where we essentially look, are there any pieces of some of the chromosomes missing? Are there additional chromosomes present? Because that gives us a rather good idea, um, in addition to the clinical uh, you know, numbers and, and, and what we can see from the blood tests, um, and how the MDS, how advanced the MDS actually is. For the more advanced stages of MDS, so often the intermediate and the higher risk MDS, and I should mention we group them by the International Prognostic Scoring System, and there's an updated version, the IPSSR, or revised, so it has five categories in it now. So in the more advanced stages, um, especially also if the blood counts start falling more rapidly, or if we see more and more blast or leukemic cells in the bone marrow, those patients would be appropriate candidate to start by DASA or Dacogen. On the other hand, there are patients with low risk MDS where the blood counts are still fairly normal. Sometimes the patients are only anemic or only the platelets are low. That's what's commonly seen. And sometimes we can wait treating those patients and just follow them closely in the clinic with blood tests and a bone marrow biopsy, you know, every so often. Then another question I often get is, um, once I start one of those two, Videzer or Decidabine, 
what will happen to my blood counts? Will I respond immediately? Will I see benefits within a couple of days or weeks? Or may it take some time? So as we mentioned earlier, because both, you know, those hypermethylating agents change the gene structure ev eventually, it takes some time. This doesn't happen in a couple of days or often doesn't happen, happen even the first month. That's why those medications are given often for three or four months at least and often up to five and six months before we determine that it works or it doesn't work. Of course, we can see responses after the first one, two or three months, but sometimes it takes up to four, five, or even six or seven months, as I mentioned. If those medications work, sometimes we can see that the anemia improves, sometimes the platelet count increases, and sometimes the white blood cell count, or the ANC, which is the absolute neutrophil count, improves or sometimes all three of those blood lineages, the red cells, the platelets, or the white cells, increase and improve. That's one goal of the therapy, make the counts better. The other goal of the therapy, for, especially for patients that require transfusions for blood and for patients, is to reduce the transfusion requirements. And you can imagine that if a patient comes in once a week or every two weeks for, you know, two units of blood and platelet, it puts quite some stress on the patient, their family, and, you know, and, and everybody. So if we can help reducing those needs for transfusions, that's the second goal of those medications. A third goal is to delay the, the onset or of progression or the worsening of the MDS into higher stages and grades, as well as eventually sometimes into the progression of an acute leukemia. So we have several treatment goals treating patients with those hypermethylating agents. Improving the counts, reducing transfusion needs and requirements, and delaying or slowing down the progression of the MDS. Sometimes patients achieve all three, and sometimes we are successful reducing transfusion requirements, and patients still may still have some low blood counts, but that's also a benefit already.